I'm with Luke, and as you can see, this is the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, FIRE. That's a good name there. And we were talking about how uh, you've helped out or have been involved in pro-life issues on campuses. Why don't you tell us some more about that? Well, my name is Luke Sheehan, and I work for the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education. And we defend students' free speech rights. And what we find is that a number of pro-life groups have had their free speech rights threatened on campus. And now, one issue that comes directly to mind is at Northern Kentucky University. A professor there who supported abortion rights decided that that the students who were holding a pro-life protest on campus didn't have a right to it. So she said that her free speech rights, or rather her, her feelings, w uh, were more important than those students' free speech rights. She led a number of her students out and she actually vandalized and destroyed the pro-life display. Now this is a clear violation of the students' free speech rights. They could go out there, have their protest, put up their signs, and, that's, and so forth. Now she had a right to counter protest, of course. She had a right to express her own views, but she thought that her, her right to her feelings uh, were more important than those students' free speech rights. And so she went out and actually destroyed the protest. Um, to the university's credit, they, they took action against her and punished her and defended the students' free speech rights. But those are, that's an example of the sort of situations we see on campus. And I think in general, do, do you think that it's the kind of situation where some of the students might feel intimidated about things? Maybe that's why they might not get involved as much as they could? Well, I think there, there's a certain aspect of that, certainly. Uh, what we find is that very often it's not a matter of intimidation, it's a matter of direct censorship. So even if they want to express themselves and they have the courage to do so, the university will attempt to shut them down and actually uh, shut down their protests. If you, you may know of the case at the University of Maryland uh, where the university actually made the pro-life display go far away from the campus so they couldn't even be anywhere near the buildings or the main walkways because they said that the the posters would be offensive to students uh, and so even when students have the the courage to speak out um, universities will actually try to directly censor it so it's not even a matter of of a of a unfavorable environment but an actual explicit violation of their rights so what do you recommend for students perhaps that they want to get involved, they don't really know what to do, can they talk to you and get information? Oh, absolutely. Students interested in expressing their views uh, should go to our website, thefire.org, and we have information there uh, how to, about how to defend their rights. We have our guides to student rights on campus covering free speech, due process, student fees, um, religious liberty, and first year orientation and thought reform. They're all free to students. They can sign up on our website, we'll send them to them to free, or they can download them in PDF form. Additionally, we have our Campus Freedom Network, of which I am the director, and um, what we want to do is empower students to be able to defend their own rights and educate them on what those rights are. All right, what's that website again? It is thefire.org. Thefire.org, thank you, appreciate the time. Thank you.